and gentlemen, please, the man you are here to see, please welcome Mr. Dennis Prager. Here he comes. He even brought his own camera. It is great to see you here, friend. I'm going to give you this. By the way, for the record, this table did not stand. Joe, I, I, I don't even notice it, but I, I thought you'd be interested in knowing. If I were Stalin, you'd be in the gulag. Just I, a happy opening thought. You never know what I'm going to come out with, because I don't. <laughs> Makes two of us. Good to be with you. It's good to see you, and thank you for being here. What a beautiful night. I think last year... Got a little cold toward the end, so thank you all for not only being here, but for listening to what I think is Colorado's most eclectic, common sense radio station, uh, certainly right now on the air, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. And of course, you can hear Dennis from 11 to 1, Monday through Friday on KNUS. Uh, I do want to just say, because this is kind of my shtick, um, and it's not a gimmick, uh, I know Wally and George, United States veterans, we would not be here tonight without our military. How many other veterans do we have here tonight? And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You make us, maybe it's for some debatable, are we still the greatest country on earth? I don't know, I still think so. Um, before we start with Dennis, Many of you are enjoying the premium cigars, so I wanted to bring up Jordan from Stanley Pappas Cigars to give us a brief kind of 101 on, like, which end do you light? This is heaven for me, because as you, you, you know, if you it. listen to my show, I especially want questions on Fridays, you will hear it tomorrow, about cigars, classical music, audio equipment, photography equipment, and fountain pens. So tonight I got to do two. I signed your books with a fountain pen, and now we're going to hear about cigars. When I see a young guy who likes cigars, I have hope for my country. That's pretty awesome. Jordan, welcome. Stanley Pappas Cigars. Tell us a little bit about you guys. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Uh, as you, many of you probably know, I work at the Stanley Pappas right down the road here. Uh, it's literally the next light over. So we just thank you all for having us out tonight. Uh, happy to serve you guys, and uh, like many of you here, my dad was a Green Beret in the Army. He actually introduced me to cigars, so I owe him that. Absolutely. So give somebody the 101. How do you, if you're not a cigar aficionado like, like Mr. Prager and some in our audience, what do you do when you walk into a place like yours? So when you walk in, nine times out of ten, people don't really know what they're looking for, but we have everything from mild, full body, meaning the amount of nicotine in the cigar, so if you just really want to mess yourself up, you grab something a little stronger, you know, maybe you had a rough day at work. The mild stuff is usually sweeter, so the ladies tend to like that one. Um, but we'll walk in, I'll ask them a little bit about what they like to smoke, if they've ever smoked, and then we'll just guide them around the humidor from there. You ever smoke a Swisher Sweet? Have you, Dennis? It doesn't sound like a real cigar to me. Uh, it isn't. Um, you okay. don't sell those, or do you? Absolutely not. Okay. Good man, good man. Thank you to our sponsor, Swisher Sweet. Their table's right there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So we'll talk about lighting. And Dennis, I'd love for you to weigh in. How do you light? Let's start with uh, the man of uh, the evening. How do, you, how do you light? So I think part of the reason I am happy is not going to sound profound. But life is composed of little things, not just big things. So I get great delight uh, about, about the things I'm interested in, which, thank God, is a lot of things. So what is your name from uh, the Papa? Jordan. Jordan. Jordan, what is the record you think among your customers of lighters owned? <laughs> uh, all of them, I guess. 20? Yeah. 30? Yeah. 20? You, yeah. Know, you know somebody with 20 lighters? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not alone. Great. Yeah. I just I feel better. You got one for your so car. The he shower. asked me about lighting. You have no idea. I, co I collect lighters to use them. I don't collect just to... No, nobody gives a damn. Like, it's not a great line if 
I mean, I'm not, I've passed that era a long time ago, but how would you like to see my lighters? <laughs> doesn't, doesn't get a guy very far. I, so I, I do not have them to impress anybody. I love them. I enjoy them. So you have no idea how much there is philosophy. Not so much in lighting, although my dad in his life never used a lighter. He smoked five cigars a day. By the way, died prematurely at 96. God, how much would he have lived had he not smoked cigars? One more point. You're going to regret you asked me this. You guys could have a cigar in the meantime. This is one of my happy moments of the last few years, which had very few happy moments. This precedes the, uh, this past terrible two, two, two years. About three years ago, the oldest living World War II vet was still living. He died about two years ago. He's actually a black guy in, in Dallas, 106 years old, I think. One of my heroes. Not just he served in World War II, not because he was the oldest vet, but for this. At the Dallas Morning News, they asked him, so what's the secret to longevity? Which is the only question people ask you at 106, right? I mean, let's be honest. What's the secret? Like the guy has a secret. But he had an answer. His answer, you could look it up, Dallas Morning News. His answer was God and cigars. And I, my immediate response was completely narcissistic. I'm here for a long time. That's me, man, God and cigars. The rest is commentary. So uh, my dad was God and cigars, 96, exactly. So the, my dad never had a cutter. He would do it like this, right? Which was ugly. But, what, you know, the guy started smoking, you know, like 1933. So uh, I don't know if they had cutters then. And he only used matches. But I like cutters and I like matches. But here is a question for Jordan. Are you a cigar smoker? I am. Oh, you are. So it's good for you too then. Folks, this has caused bar fights. People have, been, have gone on duels over this. What is the best cut? Straight, V, or bullet? Gentlemen? Really? The audience says V? No, 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 no. I'm hearing a lot the of V. The V cutters said V. <laughs> the audience did not say V. <laughs> That's a good point. What about you, expert? Well, I think straight cut is the most classic. It was probably the first blade and like the first type of cut introduced in the cigar smoking field. However, I prefer the hole punch. And the reason I say really? that... Really? I do, yeah. It was worth the trip just for that. I have never met a cigar smoker of his caliber. Who's, I've met V and I've met Hole. Please, W-H-O-L-E. Uh, 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 -E. He's H-O-L-E. Go ahead, Why? So the hole punch, as you can see, really small. It's like cutting a hole in a sheet of paper. It, it preserves a lot of the cap of the cigar on there. It's the least likely to uh, let the, or cause the cigar to unravel while you're smoking it. So it kind of maintains the construction of the cigar. That's true. But what about getting more taste? Tell me about that. So a lot of the taste comes from the wrapper of the cigar. One third, actually, maybe more. Uh, so preserving some of that wrapper and the cap will help maintain the consistency of the flavor throughout the cigar. I think you have a guest for, like, a Cigar Friday, you know? Don't forget us okay. here in Denver. I, I, I live on Earth, so I know that the percentage of my listeners who care about this is very close to zero. <laughs> I, I'm totally aware of it. I get away with enough nonsense. You want to know my great... In 40 years, this, I just this last month was my 40th anniversary on radio. Congratulations. Thank you. That, that is worthy of, I tell you, that's a big deal. I admit it. So, by far the weirdest comment I, I made, I think, because I, 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 I love the absurd. It keeps me sane. Out of nowhere once, maybe it was a male-female hour, I just blurted out, because this is what I do, with the, but I ha there's a curse I have. I could say the most nonsensical thing completely straight-faced. And so I think everybody listening is cracking up, but I'm wrong. So I said out of nowhere, you know, 
The word wife in Sanskrit means she who finds flaws in her husband. And I thought that was a riot line. I delivered it totally straight-faced and moved on to the next subject. I forgot I said it. All over this country, people would meet me at events like this and go, you know, wife in Sanskrit. <laughs> uh, they knew what they were talking about, I'm telling you. And the first guy who said it to me, I go, I'm so sorry, I don't know what you're referring to. I forgot I had said it. <laughs> so. I get away with enough without having to do hole punch or V-cut on the show, but you have re reinforced my desire to go back to hole cut. Thank you. All right. Jordan, thank you so much, brother, and uh, thank you to Stanley Pappas. Jordan, everybody, go see him you, just a, a light or so away. Thank you. We've got plenty of water up here. Good. So I think you just... Well, I, oh, forgive me. Yes. I knew I'd forget, and I will forget because... I'm going to be engrossed in your questions. So I just took a picture. I posed for a picture in front of a Colorado car with the license plate PragerU. Hey, hey. So will, the, will that wonderful couple please stand up? Wherever you are, please stand up. Thank you. Thank you. Bravo. Bravo. Nice. She said to me she gets a lot of response from other drivers. Yeah, I think it's because she's pretty. <laughs> she thinks it's because of the PragerU license. <laughs> Did you actually, like, go into a catcher's squat to take the picture and, like, point at the No, no, I stood plate? up next to it. Uh, oh, but uh, it I'm, I'm taller than the car. That's true. Anyway, so uh, I just – a guy sent me a picture of himself uh, in Arkansas. There's a PragerU plate. My wife has the PragerU California plate. And uh, we're, we're working, when, as soon as we reach 25, I promised, we're going to all meet in the middle of the country, all 25 cars. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, I want to make one more announcement. A couple came over to me during the, the VIP uh, pictures with me. They drove here tonight to come here from Dallas, Texas. I'm very, would you, folk, would you st stand up the, the, with the couple who did that? There they are. Yeah. Do they still make no dos? <laughs> uh, I just heard we have, uh, and I think I said hello. Somebody from Ohio is here. Really? All the way from Ohio. Not to make Texas feel bad. We appreciate you being here. Aren't I, our summers better than where you live? It is warm, but, you know, he's, you, nobody, I mean, Maybe nobody's even pitting out right now, like in Dallas. I think we can even have this. Where's Ohio? Just wave. Thank you. Thank Wait, you. Thank you. You actually came from Ohio for the event? Or you were here visiting your kids? I had a feeling. But it does... It, it, it. What did she say? She was going to Glenwood. She was going to Glenwood Springs. Instead, she went, Rip, and she's coming to see Prager, so... You know, that's I'm very touched. Thank you. Very for nice. Coming. All right, let's get into it. You mentioned something a, a couple of uh, minutes ago about the absurdity. I just this is just going to come out of left field. Maybe some of you have heard this. As of today, in the state of New York, if you are 21 years or younger, excuse me, under 21, you are not allowed to buy cans of whipped cream. I know that's a crazy way to start, but to me, it says so. Much. Cans of whipped cream? Shaken up, you know. Have you ever done this? No. I don't believe that. I do not believe that, but I'll believe I, you. I, 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 uh, but, but my point is, and starting out of left field, is this is the type of society we live in now where you, uh, if you're 22 and you look young, are you gonna, you're going to be carded in the state of New York when Thanksgiving is coming up because somebody forgot the can of whipped cream. It is insanity, and I thought that was a pretty good example. I have an, a column out. You should take a look, seriously. I, I give, uh, it's called The Age of Insanity. Oh, no, The Age of Absurdity, I'm not Insanity. The Age of the Absurd. And I give about nine examples of, of absurd things that are said. My Sanskrit thing about wife is funny, but they're saying things that are not funny but are absurd. Men menstruate. 
Have you seen the, the uh, viral video of me on Bill Maher's show? It's really worth seeing. It's, it's viral. It's easily found on YouTube. And there are millions of views of it now, and there should be. It'll be three years in November that I was on his show, so a couple of months before the lockdown. By the way, never say before COVID. The issue is not COVID. The issue is lockdown. So never say COVID didn't wreck the country. The lockdowns wrecked the country, which I said at the time in April of 2020. I tweeted, and I don't tweet much, and I wrote a column that this was the greatest mistake in world history, the worldwide lockdowns. Sweden proved it was a mistake, and, and look at the damage that is ongoing economically with kids and, and so on. So uh, I said on his show, he said, oh, Trump is such a liar. President Trump was still president then, of course. This was uh, 2019, November 2019, almost three years ago. So I said, well, it doesn't compare to the lies of the left. And of course, I'm the only non-leftist on, on the show, which is to his credit. I'm not, I'm not complaining. I have no problem with that. I believe it or not, I somewhat enjoy being booed. <laughs> I know it sounds bizarre, but it only means I hit the target. <laughs> so I, I'm fine with it. So, and I, so I said, so he said, oh, really? Like what? I said, like America is systemically racist. It's one of the greatest lies in history. Give you another one. Men menstruate. And Bill Maher starts to laugh. The panel on the show begins to laugh, and the entire audience begins to laugh. And he goes, in the middle of laughter, he goes, where'd you hear that one, Dennis? Like I made it up. Now if you deny men menstruate, you're called transphobic. You're a hater. So less than three years ago, Liberals were laughing at the idea that anyone would say men menstruate. Today, they all say it as if it's the science. That's how bad things have gotten. If the left says something, it doesn't matter how absurd. Within a year, it becomes a truism. Let's switch to the FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago. Uh, I guess I just hand that topic to you for first thoughts, and then we'll get into what the Trump team is asking for the third party. I think there was some action with the judge earlier today, but how do you view what happened there in the Department of Justice? Again, it's as, it's as unbelievable as men menstruate that they are using America's police, the FBI, to uh, persecute a, a, a previous president. That's the stuff you heard about in South America many years, where they would arrest the previous president. You said something earlier that was very, uh, very meaningful and depressing. You asked, are we still the greatest country? It's actually a fair question. And I've, my whole life, have known, I didn't believe, I, know, I knew America's the best country. There's no guarantee that we will remain a good country. There's no, there's no bloodline, there's no American ethnicity to keep American values. Either Americans will keep American values and therefore America great, or they won't. It's a values issue. It has nothing to do with race, ethnicity, religion, anything. Well, that's to do with religion. Secularism kills everything which I could talk about if you want later. Uh, and there were a lot of secular conservatives who were wonderful people, but they have to understand there's a reason the founders put rights come from the creator in the Declaration of Independence. No creator, no rights. End of issue. If people are the source of rights, people can take them away. They, they understood that. Where do you think that this ends. Does John, Donald Trump get arrested? Is he going to serve time? What, what is, at least from what you know now, what is your gut feeling? It would give the, all the elites of this country joy to see him in prison. You know, for four years, I not once on my show used the term Trump derangement syndrome. The reason I didn't use it was I, I didn't like 
dismissing people I differed with as mentally disturbed. That's the reason I didn't. However, since he's been in office, I, I have come to realize the term is accurate. Because I know people with Trump derangement syndrome. These were people who thought clearly until Trump and abandoned reason. And the reasons are not easily explained. It takes a tremendous lack of wisdom to think that if a man did as much good as he did as president, you dismiss it all because you don't like him. I consider Trump derangement syndrome to be a form of narcissism. How I feel about Donald Trump is more important than what good is done for my country. It's narcissism. And I know every one of the never Trumpers, every leading never Trumper I know personally. It's very painful. But there, there's, there's no moral or, or even clear thinking to this hatred especially among religious Jews and Christians or people who say they're religious, who in the name like of Christianity will condemn Trump. You might as well condemn God. God uses sinners to do his will. I'm not saying God chose Donald Trump, but, but we know if you believe the Bible, God used King David, who makes Donald Trump look like a saint. King David not only committed adultery, he had the husband killed so that he could sleep with the, with the, with the, the wife of that man. That's, that, nobody accused Donald Trump of doing that. And uh, then another one example, less well known, is the, the biblical figure Rahab, or Rachav in Hebrew. She was the Canaanite who enabled the Israelites to get into Canaan. She hid the spies. You know what her profession was? Was she a Canaanite accountant? A Canaanite tax expert? Was she a Canaanite magician? She was a Canaanite prostitute. Why did God choose of all the people he could have chosen to let his chosen people into the promised land? A prostitute. Because God wants to teach us a lesson. People who personally sin may do great good with their lives. That's Donald Trump. I just was pausing so they could just give you a, a round of applause. Let's talk about uh, the January 6th committee. Uh, I think today, if I saw the longest sentence so far, former New York City police officer who was there January 6th. I think it was a 10-year sentence. How are you following the committee? I think a lot of us would agree that this sure as hell seems like a, a witch hunt. Uh, Wyoming has spoken to our north, and Liz Cheney will be, well, as we speak, she is lame duck. Um, where does this go? Well, this is a very bad thing. I spoke to a man named John Mellis on my radio show from his prison. The man uh, is uh, January 6th, 280 days in solitary confinement. This despicable government that we have, I never used that term in my life. I didn't use it about the Obama administration. I didn't use it about Clinton. For me to say that a president is despicable, it's so unlike me, but he is. And everyone around him is despicable. They are low lifes. We have low lifes in places of power in this country. The Democratic Party is okay with rapists and murderers out of prison. But if you showed up on January 6th, you deserve the worst we could do. And by the way, solitary confinement is torture. I don't believe waterboarding is torture. I believe it is terror. I don't believe it is torture. I'd rather be waterboarded than in solitary confinement for 260 days. Nobody comes out sane. People come out sane after waterboarding. Guys in our own armed forces are waterboarded as practice so that they could withstand it if it happens to them. They're not put in solitary confinement for, for most of a year. These people are evil. They hate us. They hate everyone in this room. 
They hate you. Just want you to know that. They hate you. And you know what? I don't know why. I still can't figure it out. What's, what's hateable about us? What, what did we do? I can only say moral midgets hate moral giants. But I don't think I'm a moral giant. I don't know how many of you are. But compared to them, we're giants. We, we, we don't want to create chaos. They do. The essence of the left is chaos. Men give birth is chaos. We're living in, in, in the age of chaos, and it is... I could, the, the, the good answer to your question, are we still the best country, is this. In some ways, we're the worst. We are the exporter of woke ideology. Europe did not come up with woke ideology. In fact, the French are disgusted with America for exporting woke ideology. How's that for a change of pace? They don't say men give birth in France. They think the idea is absurd. Even, even people on the left in France think men give birth is absurd. Macron thinks it's absurd. There's something particularly sick about the American left. Particularly sick. And, and we have close runners-up in all the other English-speaking countries. The only consolation is Canada is worse. Canada is becoming Cuba. What they did to the truckers... Guys, guys don't, don't want to be forced to take a vaccination that doesn't work. The, the lies we were told to about the vaccine are, are beyond belief. It doesn't work. They admit it doesn't work. Every single one of the leaders in, in medicine and in the government said, you take the vaccine, you don't get COVID. Just about everybody who took the vaccine got COVID. So what's their next lie? You would have died if you didn't have the vaccine. We take back that you won't get COVID. Some of us knew it. I never got vaccinated. Now, last time you were here, a little less than a year ago, maybe, what, 50 weeks ago, I remember you on this stage said, I want to get COVID. You ended up getting it. How sick were you, and was it what you had expected? Maybe there's a what you expect from the media's point of view and what they're telling you you're going to potentially go through, but then what did you go through? Because I believe that almost anything the American Medical Association is a lie, I just take it as a given. They're the one, by the way, they announced that there should not be sex listed on birth certificates. The American Medical Association. It is a sick, vile group. You should all ask your doctor, are you a member? Only one out of 10 doctors is. Are you a member? And then say respectfully, I need to find another doctor. I love you very much. You've been wonderful for me. But this is such a destructive organization, I cannot support a doctor who's a member of a vile organization. That's one way to fight back. We have to fight. These little fights are tremendous. So the, uh, the, they, they made all these announcements. I got COVID. So I got COVID twice. I had been on I ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine and zinc for a year. So did it work? I don't know. I don't know. I believe it did. I don't know for a fact. I'm not the AMA. Uh, but I would never tell anybody not to take it because they're harmless. They're, they're two of the most, they're on the list of the WHO's most important drugs in the world, both ivermectin and, and hydroxychloroquine, and they're completely safe. So I took them. I got, I got the bad COVID. What was the name? Delta. I got the bad one, Delta. So what I got it in, in, in either North Carolina or South Carolina. I was giving some speeches. I got the chills. I thought I just had, you know, bad cold. I gave two speeches, as it turns out, with COVID. <laughs> Nobody in the audience got it. And I, I was well enough to give two speeches with, with the bad COVID. Now you'll love the second COVID. So <laughs> let's see, when did this happen? What, what month are we in? Yeah, it was this year. Earlier this year, the following happened. I live in a city uh, near Pasadena called La Cañada. And La Cañada is uh, a small town, and, you know, well, mostly well-to-do people. I didn't move there because it's well-to-do. It's near my radio station, and it's beautiful and quiet. 
Anyway, for the first time in the history of La Cañada, a rabbi came into the town to open a synagogue. It's called a Chabad house. Some of you may know of it. Every city in America has a Chabad house, C-H-A-B-A-D. These are these bearded, ultra-Orthodox rabbis and their wives who open a house and have 11 children. Those are their character. They're wonderful people. I'm obviously not that Orthodox, though I am a, a, a committed Jew. So the, this rabbi comes to this town, says, Dennis, can you help me? I go, be, I would be delighted to help you. I'll give you a free speech, publicize it, make some money, get known. And he does that. So we have a speech for a Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, a few months ago. I get, I get a, a bad cold or whatever I got. I don't remember the symptoms, coughing, whatever. And I say, look, I morally have to take a test. Because I can't show up. Later I get COVID and they get, why didn't you take a test? I'm positive. Two hours before the speech. If I don't show up, he can't open his synagogue. It's dependent upon that evening. I call the guy up and I go, Rabbi, I, I, I got terrible news. He goes, what? I, I just tested positive for COVID. This is two hours before the speech. And the guy goes, so What? This man is a hero. He should be a national hero. He goes, so what? And I go, I couldn't agree with you more, Rabbi. I just felt morally obligated to tell you. I agree, so what? I'm 40 feet away from the people in the front row. Okay? It's, a, it's not going to travel. And he says, exactly. And I'm young and healthy. I'll hug you. End of issue. He hugs me. I don't go into the audience. I give my speech. That's, it, was, it was nothing. In, in both cases, I gave speeches. And, and, uh, sh and did my radio show. Uh, how fast have you ever gone down the two south to your studios from La Cañada? I average 80. Average 80? Yeah. You ever meet a Mr. Poncher John, California Highway Patrol officer? Okay, now my police story. Oh, we're in Denver. This is the best. You'll appreciate it. I tell the story all, all over the country. This is years ago. My wife is a witness. She was in the car. I'm speeding to, to, to uh, Denver International Airport. And because, uh, uh, you know, I have to make the plane. I have to return the car. And officer stops me. And your license, please. I show my California license. He looks at me. He goes, I'm sorry. I'm going to ask for your signature on a photo. Gives me his address, and I sent him a photo to officers so-and-so with warmest wishes. <laughs> uh, some of our audience knows this, Dennis, that had you even, like, assaulted someone here in the city of Denver, the district attorney doesn't really prosecute anyone, so you would have been oh, just... Oh, he would prosecute a white conservative. She... She would prosecute actually a white conservative. would probably sentenced both of us to life yes, for a speeding exa ticket. Yes, exactly, with solitary confinement. Yeah, she is not my favorite. Uh, let's was, go was she, to... Was she funded by Soros? Uh, probably. Let's go to, uh, speaking of the police, it was two days ago, three days ago, we all learned a new word from Joe Biden, and that would be funda. Funda. We must funda the police. Isn't it interesting that in this city and your city uh, across the country, uh, 27 months ago, we learned the name of George Floyd and we see our friends on the left do nothing. They don't say anything about, you know, the rioting and, you know, they don't speak up. And now we're just, uh, what, a little more than a couple months away from the midterms. And now it is all the rise of the left and how we must support our law enforcement. To me, it's about as good an example of hypocrisy as it gets. Oh, it's beyond hypocrisy. <laughs> I wish they were just hypocrites. Th th this, is, uh, this is lying. Uh, it's, it's the great Groucho Marx line when, he, when his wife comes in and sees him in bed with another woman. And, and, and she's yelling and screaming, and he goes, you're going to believe me or your lying eyes? That, that, is, that scene 
from Groucho Marx should, it symbolizes the Democratic Party. You're going to believe us or your lying eyes and lying ears. We, what are you talking about? Democrats advocated defunding the police? On what planet are, did you hear that? They, they all, that that's, and yet their, their own people will support it. There's, there's nothing the left can do that would uh, cause most people on the left to abandon them. I, I truly believe that. And I, I have a very odd life in many ways, wonderfully odd, but odd. Do you know what my major in graduate school was? In all of Columbia University, seven students majored in this. I mean, I'm sure there were far more who studied entomology, the study of insects, than studied this. Communist affairs, that was what it was called. My, my field of study was communism. I learned Russian to go to the Soviet Union on, on, on multiple occasions and to read Pravda every day, the Soviet communist newspaper. And I, I saw and learned what they're like, the left. So why am I raising this? When I said to you there's nothing the left could do that would have people the true believer leftists abandon them. Do you know how many communists Stalin murdered? He, he basically murdered the entire upper echelon of communists. The most famous being Trotsky, whom he, who he followed to Mexico and had him stabbed to death with an ice pick. In the Soviet Union, these people were often tortured to death. And do you know what almost all of them said? If only Comrade Stalin knew what you were doing, he would stop this. Even as they're being tortured to death by Stalin's secret police, they're thinking Stalin's a good guy. That is, that is the true believer. Leftists are true believers. They're as fanatic as, as the most fanatic religious person of any religion. It's, that's why it's very difficult to undo their damage. This may sound like a joke, but I kind of mean it. Why do they let Joe out of the White House? He said things in his speech just earlier this week, and I'm not sure if he gave another one today. But he talks about we've got to fund the police, yet that went against what candidate Biden was, was saying. He wasn't speaking out against any of the BLM or Antifa. Seemingly, at times, it seems like at least... Once during a speech, if he's asked something by the press corps, uh, they don't want me to say that. Or they, they, he talks about a they. Is he under instruction? Probably, but it doesn't matter. Which you're leading me to a very important thing. I think it's important that I say all the time. I've been saying it for all of my life. And... Um, I've had no, it has had no impact. <laughs> I fully acknowledge it. <laughs> I've said to Republicans who run for office, do not run against your opponent, run against the left. Your opponent is interchangeable with everybody else on the left. A Democrat is a leftist, a leftist is a Democrat. So when you preoccupy yourself with the flaws of your opponent, you're, you're not explaining to the electorate what is at stake. If I ran for office as a Republican, I would say my opponent is irrelevant. I am running against the Democratic Party and its destruction of this country. If you do not understand what they're doing to this country in schools, robbing children of innocence at the age of five, if you're okay with what is being done to children, vote Democrat. If you're okay with what is being done with inflation, vote Democrat. If you're not, my opponent is interchangeable with every other Democrat. He's a Democrat. That is self-negating. That is what every Republican running should say. I pay no attention to Joe Biden. If Joe Biden, God forbid, well, I have to say that, if he, no, not... For, if he were absconded by extraterrestrials, let's even not say God forbid he died. 
If extraterrestrials kidnapped him, what improvement would there be? None. It would be Kamala Harris. And then, then it would be Nancy Pelosi. What difference does it make? Can you name a Democrat who might make a difference? Minimally, Joe Manchin, although he buckled at the end and I don't know why, or, or Kristen Sinema. But basically, it's irrelevant. The party is not a liberal party. If it were a liberal party, then I would run against my opponent. It's a left-wing party. The left destroys everything it touches that has been true since Vladimir Lenin to the Democratic Party of today. Everything it touches, male-female relations, children, schools, up through the university, music, art, late-night television. Remember Johnny Carson? Did you know Johnny Carson's politics? I didn't. Johnny Carson believed he had one role to bring some laughter to the average American after a tough day, because most people have a lot of tough days. He never for a moment thought, I need to tell you that I'm a Republican or a Democrat. Now the crap on late night television, these people are crap. They're bad people. They have no desire to bring joy to people's lives because the left is joyless. There are no happy leftists, none. There are happy liberals, there are happy conservatives, there are no happy leftists. So they bring their misery into every arena of life. And that's what a Republican has to understand, but they don't. So Joe Biden is of no interest to me. He's interchangeable with every other Democrat in office. He was certainly happy to sign the Inflation Reduction Act, which I don't think, uh, I think most of us would agree, uh, has nothing to do with reducing inflation. But to me, and I, I was telling our audience uh, that within the last couple of weeks, that to me this is just such an obvious Green New Deal agenda, and you look at what it's going to cost. We'll get into in a moment uh, the forgiveness of student loans, but uh, what was your take and then what was your audience from a national perspective on the Inflation Reduction Act? That's Orwell. We will spend hundreds of billions of dollars, print more hundreds of billions of dollars that we don't have, and reduce inflation. That is why I say liberals, le not liberals, leftists lie with the ease with which you breathe. I don't believe they have the same conscience that you do. I don't think they ever ask themselves at the New York Times on their opinion page or even in their news columns, am I telling the truth? Do you know that in the 1970s, the New York Times had an editorial? The ideal minimum wage... In big letters, 0.00. Zero, zero, zero. That was when the New York Times was liberal. Today, they're leftists, so it's a rag sheet. Learning how to read Pravda has taught me how to read the New York Times. I say this with sadness, no joy. They lie. This is an Inflation Reduction Act? Uh, one is left speechless. Let's talk about student loans, the forgiveness, um, up to $20,000, depending on the income. What was the reaction uh, from your audience? Uh, here, I can tell you a lot of people in Colorado were and probably remain pretty furious. Well, the question is in my audience, most of them are conservative. The question is, does the... Does the average American think that this is a good idea? We've lost a chunk of this country if the average American thinks this is good. On one grounds alone, uh, it, it, is, it is vicious. It is a F you to everyone who paid off a student loan, to every family that saved up and paid it off. The left does not honor the responsible human being. It honors the irresponsible human being. This is just another example of that. You paid off your debt? Ha, 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 Screw you, man. You're a sucker. Colleges, you don't charge enough? 
we're giving you the green light to charge more. And by the way, there's an agenda no one talks about. The left wants your kid to go to college because that's, that's when they become a leftist. The biggest uh, block now outside of uh, black America to vote, uh, to vote Democrat are the college-educated whites, especially white women. So every college graduate is a likely Democratic voter. So they have a vested interest in getting your kids brainwashed. And when they are, when you influence someone at the age of 19, that's more profound than when you in influence them at the age of five. People think you have to influence little kids. You do, but it's no comparison. I ran an institute. The reason I moved to California from New York in my 20s was to be the director of a Jewish retreat center. In the summer, we had 90 kids, ages 19 to 25, in, in July, and then the same in August. These kids, 95% of them were secular. Many of them were paid by their parents to go for a month to study Judaism. None of them were, virtually none were committed to religion. And I was able, along with my staff, to, to turn them around, in most cases, in a month. They took God and religion seriously after the month. And I learned that's the best age to influence people, college age. And they know that on the left. You send your kid to college, there's a good chance you'll get a leftist. It's one of the reasons I'm pro-drinking. If your kid is drunk for four years at college, chances are they'll come out a conservative. There's one friend of our station and there's somebody going not every school is like that jeff hunt is here from the uh, centennial institute colorado christian university that's true not exactly correct friend the of exceptions ours. like that yep. prove the prove the rule that's correct jeff did you bring your admissions uh facilitator tonight uh good job um here's a story that happened this past weekend not 10 miles 12 miles to our south the Douglas County Pride Fest. I don't care. They can have their Pride Fests. I don't even label them as them. I have no problem with gay marriage. That has pissed off a lot of people over the years. But I feel the way I feel. But I don't understand the transgender drag queen. I don't understand, Dennis, the drag queen story time in elementary schools, libraries. Do you? Yeah, I do. This one I do understand. I don't understand why people move in this direction, but I understand what they're trying to accomplish. They loathe the Judeo-Christian order. And I emphasize Judeo-Christian and order. <clears throat> so to understand the left, and I've devoted my life to trying to understand the left... I have a religious explanation, because I think that ultimately this is all a religious issue, which is why they hate Christians. The only group you're allowed to hate in America and the West are Christians. And by the way, you want to know an Orwellian fact? There is a name for the hatred of every group except Christians. The single biggest hatred in the world today of any religious or even minority group is hatred of Christians. Vast numbers of Christians are massacred by Muslims in West Africa. Just doesn't make the news. Are there any Christians massacring Muslims? Anybody massacring anybody other than Christians being massacred? Not that I know of. In America, touring the, the museums of this country was piss Christ. A crucifix in, in a jar of urine. As I pointed out, because they're all cowards. Leftism and cowardice and, and liberalism, with Sarah sadly, go together. These, these uh, museum curators think they were really gutsy in featuring Piss Christ. It's a very famous thing, look it up, of the author's urine with a crucifix uh, in it. Would any museum in this country allow the same thing with Muhammad or a Quran? These guys are gutless. They, they, 
of course you could pick on a Christian. Of course you could mock Christianity because you're not going to get killed by a Christian. They all speak about the threat that Christians pose, but they know they don't, you, most of you are Christians, don't pose any threat to them. That's, that's the irony. Muslims throw, th pose a threat to them. The left throws a, uh, poses a threat to them. The left will get, will get them out of office if they don't toe the left-wing line. They'll lose their career and their money, their prestige, their name. And with the Muslims, they'll lose their life. So, what was your question? Oh, Dra yes, explain queen. it. No, no, explain it, yes. Story time. So, how, what, is, what is all of this, what am I leading to? I, I know what they're doing, but I don't know fully what animates it. They're trying to undo, as I said, the Judeo-Christian order. So here's a biblical thought. Some of you have my commentary with you. I hope you read it. I urge you to read it. What does God do for six days? He doesn't create. He creates on the first day. He creates on the sixth day, and he creates on, I believe, the third day. It, create is only three times mentioned. Beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created the human being, male and female, he created them. And God created the big fish from which many other animals derive. What is God doing the rest of the time when he's not creating? He's making order. I consider the f most important verse in the Bible, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If you don't accept that, there's no reason for you to read on. And number two, the second most important is Genesis 1-2. And in the beginning, all was chaos. Chaos is the natural state. God spent six days undoing chaos and making order. The left hates the Judeo-Christian world it hates its order. They are at peace with chaos. If you could tell children they're not a boy or a girl, if Disney will no longer say boys and girls at Disneyland or Disney World, this is an achievement on their part. It is pure chaos. They live for chaos. This is a, an inflation reduction act is chaos. No, it, it's all chaos. Now, why people prefer chaos to order, I don't know. I can only tell you this. I think secularism plus affluence equals boredom, and boredom is a big problem. Leftists are bored. They're, that's why they're, they believe they're saving the world with wind and solar power. They're saving the whole world Imagine that. You know, how, you know what a high that must be? I don't think I'm doing anything that saved the world. <laughs> they do. And it's an existential threat. New York Times had a piece about it's not worth having children because of uh, 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 climate change. So I always read the comments section. And in the New York Times, like many other places, you can only comment if you're a subscriber. So these were New York Times subscribers. <coughs> what they said, I wrote a whole column on it, and I did a whole show on it. R commenter after commenter said, I've looked forward all of my life to being a grandparent, but my daughter or my son or my son and daughter-in-law or my daughter-in-law or my daughter, daughter and son-in-law have decided not to have children because of global warming, and I support them, even though it means I will never be a grandparent. These people are sick. Do you understand how sick they are? <laughs> but they, they, they believe that... They... One final word on this to explain the left. Chesterton, it's not known if he actually said this, but it's something he would have said if... if if he could have said it. When people stop believing in God, they don't believe in nothing. They believe in anything. We are living in the age of post-God anything. 
men menstruate or it is okay to bankrupt the civilization by getting rid of fossil fuels and, and natural gas and coal, but it's, it's a great thing to do that. These, this is the belief in anything. A woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. That was a feminist phrase. That's believing in anything. Feminism, environmentalism, humanism, communism, Marxism. These are the secular religions that have replaced Christianity. And this is a Jew telling you this. That's what's happened. That's why secular conservatives are making a spectacular error. And I'll tell you something. Your grandchildren won't be conservative. Either they'll be religious conservatives or be they secular leftists. Secularism is a death warrant to every good value. Just, it is. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, it just is. There is no example before the modern age of a society without a God-centered religion. Could have been Zeus, but it was something. This is an incredible experiment. All of a sudden, for the first time in history, people don't need a God. People don't need a Bible. They'll make it up as they go. And that's what they do on the left. They make it up as they go. This is, this explains them better than anything I know, and even that's not a full explanation. Why would you really want to poison five-year-olds into thinking they're not a boy or a girl? And by the way, read my last column, which I admit took some cojones to write, but God gave me good ones. <laughs> Women are disproportionately ruining our society. That is the title of my column. And they are. 92% of kindergarten teachers are women. 85% of school teachers are women. 85% of librarians are women. And they're screwing kids all over this country. They're ruining them. My whole life, I believed women's instinctive, natural tendency was to protect children's sexual innocence. I was wrong. I was wrong. Women are in the vanguard of ruining children's lives. In the vanguard. That's how bad the left is. Ladies, we didn't hear anything from you. <laughs> they agree. My <laughs> wife fully agrees. My wife egged me on to write. You know who <laughs> agrees is people that have been divorced. Those men are going, I kept telling her that. Yes, I did. She's ruining everything. We have got about, uh, he's not there, about a little less than 10 minutes, and then we're going to open it up for uh, Q&A. Uh, you may have heard, and we don't have to be on this, but you, I'm from California. You live there. It was today, I believe, and I'm sorry, I was been, I've been out of the news today, but it was either today or yesterday. After last week, the, the California State Legislature, you know what? Forget gasoline vehicles. We will no longer sell them by 2035. It was either today or yesterday. Within the last 48 hours, it's going to be very hot in California for the Labor Day weekend, and you should not plug your electric vehicle in. Do you right. see that delicious irony there? Of course you do. It's not delicious, but uh, it's horrific. It doesn't matter to them. I told you, it, truth is not a left-wing value. Let's depend on electric cars. Just don't charge it this weekend. But I could put gas in it, couldn't I? And still ride it. They live in a make-believe world, these people. It's a make-believe world. And every one of you has as relatives who believe this. This is God's test of you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wrap up uh, our portion, if you would. Let's talk a little bit about the midterms coming up. Do you see, I may have asked you this last year, but do you see a red wave that a lot of conservatives, you know, they're praying, please get out and vote. Do you see it happening nationwide? Well, all of my life I've been asked to make predictions. I never have because I, I, I never know the future. I, I do what the prophets in the Old Testament do. Contrary to what people think, prophet doesn't mean tell the future. That's the English definition of prophet, but that's not. The Hebrew word for the prophet, navi, means spokesman. I wish that that was the term used. They're God's spokesman. They're, they don't tell the future. To the extent that they tell the future, 
it is exactly like God tells the future in the first five books, the ones I'm writing my commentary on, the Torah, which is the basis of the Old and New Testament, the first five books. Everything is in there. The rest is commentary. And God says constantly, if you follow, if you follow me, God, then good things will happen. If you reject me, bad things will happen. He doesn't predict what they will do. He just says if. So if, if Republicans can't make the case to vote Republican in 2022, it is hard to imagine in what year they would be able. Maybe we don't have... I, I told you, look, my experience, and I am gung-ho vote Republican... I don't like when people say there's no difference between the two parties. It's a silly comment. The, the differences are humongous. But the average Republican politician doesn't know what's at stake. Politicians don't read much. They can't. They spend most of their time in meetings and raising money. I don't blame them. I read and think for a living. They don't. They get elected for a living. They vote on bills for a living. So this, this stuff is, it's rare. Ronald Reagan knew the big picture. Do you know Ronald Reagan, Reagan made me a Republican with one line? At, at PragerU, we touch people's lives in five minutes, and I mean millions. We have a billion views a year. Most of them are under 35 years of age. There's, I had a kid on my show, a black kid, 25. He was, a B, he was in the BLM protests and riots two years ago, watched PragerU videos. He's now a conservative. We're going to have him make a video. Doesn't take five minutes. In my case, it took one line. Ronald Reagan, this is when I became a Republican. I was registered... Democrat from birth in my birth certificate. It doesn't say male, but it does say Democrat. And uh, he said, you all know the line, government is not the solution, government is the problem. And that did it. It's, I, I registered to be a Republican shortly thereafter. Even he didn't know how big, how true what he said was. I knew it from a different perspective. Every genocide of the 20th century, the most mass murdering century in human history, was committed by a big government. I hate big government because I love people. You cannot love big government and people at the same time. Only if you're a fool who got a PhD, which definitionally probably makes you a fool. Big government is a slaughterhouse. Big government is the antithesis of liberty. That's why the founders didn't want big government. That's why they made a US Senate, which is not democratic, and, a, and an electoral college, which is not democratic. They wanted to have a check, not just on government, but on the majority. So we need, we need you asked me to predict any Republican who makes the case well will win. And anyone who doesn't won't win. Unless you can depend, like they did in, in uh, Virginia, on the Democrats saying parents should have no say in what their kids are taught, then they bury themselves. I mean, he was an honest Democrat. Honest Democrats lose. Uh, would you like another cigar before you go? That's very sweet. No, I'm going to have another one. When no, I, I have a Swisher Suite if you... Oh, that's very right. kind. Thank yes, you. No? Right. Okay. I'm good. Uh, do you want to bring the house lights up, folks? And uh, we will... I don't know if we have microphones floating around, but if we don't have the house lights up, it it's really dark, so we won't see you. Are there house lights? Or are there just those lights? I think there are. I think lights. that might be the only light. Everybody get their lighters out. That'd be, that'd be cool. All right, questions for the great Dennis Prager. We'll go by show of hands or somebody yell over somewhere. We can't see anything up here. I do see, I think, a, a hand right there, sir. Go ahead. 
Oh, oh, sorry, Michael. Go ahead. Am I on? Hi. I would like to know what you think the intent is of um, the destruction of the military. What do you think the end result, what do you think the left thinks the end result is going to be of destroying the military and mm, putting people in that are transgender amongst other things? Or kicking out the best, the ones who don't want to get vaccinated. How's that for an act of suicide for the military? The strongest of our young military people, they're kicking out. The left hates uh, personal strength because they're all weak. The moment you ask, what is the consequence? I know you're a conservative. That's a conservative question. What is the consequence? They don't ask what is the consequence. They just know what feels good at the moment. Why did I know that lockdowns were a disgrace, were purely 100% destructive? Am I an epidemiologist? I don't know a damn thing about epidemiology, which I admit makes me probably more right than most epidemiologists, which is a field that I have come to have contempt for. Why did I know? I wrote it. It's there. You can look. And look at all the mockery I received, which only proves to me that I was right. When I said it was the greatest mistake in history, and I made clear, not the greatest evil. It wasn't a, it's not a holocaust. I, I acknowledge that. But it was the greatest mistake the world ever made, the lockdowns. And I said why, including children. And masks. Telling a two-year-old he had to mask on an airplane? Are you sick? The answer is... Half America's sick and half is weak. People went along with it. When I'm on an airplane and I see kids coming on with their parents with masks on, all I do is feel bad for the kid. You, you, didn't, you didn't luck out with your parents. Now, you may have them in your family, and I'll still say it. I would say it to the parent. I'd say, I'm sure you mean well, and you know what? Forgive me, folks. Meaning well doesn't mean shit. Okay? Just have that as a motto in your life. Good intentions mean nothing. I don't mean a little. They mean nothing. They are worthless. Everyone who does bad things has good intentions. Every Nazi had good intentions. Every communist had good intentions. People mass murder and torture with good intentions. Who wakes up and says, I'd like to be evil today? It may be some psychopath, but the, Nearly all the evil of the 20th century, 100 million innocents killed by ideology, were killed by people largely with good intentions. People supported communism. Sounds great, equality. You think the average German thought that they were doing bad and killing Jews? They didn't. They, were, they believed that the Jews are vermin, that we will save Germany by killing Jews. They meant well. I know it sounds sick. Good intentions mean nothing. If good intentions were worth anything, why teach the Bible? Why teach wisdom? Why teach morality? Why have laws? We should have, we should have speed limit laws, whatever your heart prompts you to do, because we know you're basically good and have good intentions. Would you rely on that for uh, traffic laws? Why not? If good intentions are everything, just do. We know you have good intentions. There are no speed limits on this highway. In fact, we don't even have rules for red light and green light. You have good intentions. You'll go through the red light when you feel it's right to. Good intentions mean nothing. So all these parents who have masked their kids hurt their kids because they're idiots. And they believe the left wing follow your heart. That's, that's, that's it. They follow their heart. Oh, I read that a mask might help. So masks help. Okay, if you believe that, I feel bad for your kids. This is, this, is, this is what we have undergone in the last couple of years. And a story today. We'll get to another question. A story today that uh, test scores, uh, where our kids are post the pandemic, um, it's written as if it's a shock that we are looking at levels that haven't been seen in a couple of decades. And didn't we all assume that that was going to be 
bad for kids and, and education. Uh, we'll take the next question. Got a few more. Go ahead, ma'am. I don't know if you have a uh, microphone near you. There we go. Thank you, Chris. Who do you think won the last presidential election, and do you think we have enough election integrity for 2022 and 2024? I don't know who won the last election, which drives both sides crazy. The people who were sure it was cheated are, are annoyed with me, and the people who were sure it wasn't cheated are annoyed with me. I don't know the answer. Okay, I, I don't know. All I do know is there are very legitimate questions about the integrity of the election because the left will cheat anytime it can. They believe that preventing Donald Trump from being elected is a good deed like I would believe preventing Lenin from getting elected or Hitler from getting elected. If, if you could prevent a Nazi from being president, wouldn't you cheat? I would. I'm not kidding. I, I, I understand that sometimes there, the amount of evil you would prevent, if you, you think lying is wrong, I do, but if you're hiding a Jew in, in Nazi Germany, you lie to the Nazis if they come to your door. No, I'm not hiding a Jew, have a great day. So there are times it's right to lie. And they think preventing a Nazi from being president makes it good. There were too many anomalies of the last election to, for me to say for certain that it was right, including motive. They have a motive to cheat. They're okay with cheating. We should never have gone to electronic ballots. What was wrong with the paper ballot? There's no trail in, in electronic ballots. Anything could happen with those machines. How come they knew the results when I was a kid in John F. Kennedy's election, when I wasn't even bar mitzvah yet? They knew the results that night. They knew the results in every election. Now it's weeks. And I'm supposed to say, oh, I believe you. Oh, I believe you. You, know, you, you close down uh, uh, counting at night when my guy is ahead, but of course I believe you mean well and that, and that you're honest. On the other hand, I don't know. We, need, we, we obviously need proof. I mean, 2,000 mules is pretty, pretty telling stuff. I fully, I'm in the movie. I know, I know about the movie. The movie affected my own thinking. You could see it in the movie. Uh, if I were a Republican, I would insist in every state we go back to paper ballots. It's the only record that I trust. The machines can be hacked. As everybody knows, I don't know why we went to machines. I think, it's, I think it's completely irresponsible. The Democrats have ruined, remember, the left ruins everything it touches, remember? Give you another one, election day. We now have election month. What happened to election day? Why is it so bad for Americans to gather with one another and vote? It was one of the most beautiful things that I ever experienced every year, was to be in line with my fellow American I didn't know how they voted. They didn't know how, well, they knew me, so they knew, they knew how I voted. But it doesn't matter. It was a time in my life they didn't know. It's just a beautiful thing. Take your child with you to see people vote. They've ruined election day. So uh, it's a long answer to your question. And uh, I, I would like to see whatever we can do to undo the damage they've already done with the machines and making election a period a month long. I've been saying over the last few weeks that they have earned our distrust, I think, from the FBI yes, to you might say. the government. I kind of like that quote. Um, let's see, another question? Mr. Prager, um, since COVID and the lockdowns, I have such difficulty going out in public and looking at my fellow citizens the same way as I did before. It's like the facade has been ripped off. Mm. The cowards, people who should know better but somehow don't, uh, you know, running around with their masks on, cowardly following everything they're told to believe. They were told to hate Donald Trump daily, and they dutifully did. I feel like so many of these people are neo- in the matrix, they've got a little thing on the back of their neck and they sit down in front of the TV and plug in and are told what to think. When there's so many 
with the beauty of the internet, there are so many sources of information. Shortly after the lockdowns, I pretty much knew COVID was a virus. Unfortunately, it did kill a few people, as many viruses do. The flu kills people every year. COVID killed people. It's unfortunate, but it happens. And yet, everybody was cowering. And it just, I look at people these days, and I don't look at them the same way I used to. I, I feel the same. It is a very painful thing, because I not only loved America, I loved Americans. And, and now I'm, my disappointment in half of my fellow citizens is so profound that it's painful. It just is painful. I, I have no cheerful response to what you say. Worse than, than that, though, is what I feel to the medical profession. To have seen the sheep-like behavior of doctors, to have seen the, the leading medical journals shut down medical dissent. Now California has passed a law, because they could, they could pass a law that the earth is flat. The Democrats have no opposition. That a doctor who spreads misinformation can lose his license to practice medicine. Misinformation is the left's way of saying we don't agree with you. What does it mean a doctor spreading misinformation? It means a doctor taking issue with the AMA or the CDC or the NIH. Don't you want doctors to take issues with other doctors? There's settled science? In what arena is there settled science? Doctors in the early 20th century said you would, uh, well, why don't you, all these illnesses would happen if you masturbated. Doctors were on record. I don't blame them, but I, I would have blamed the American Medical Association if said if you differ with those doctors, you lose your license. That was not as harmful as saying that uh, ivermectin is just for horses. The harm that they did, by the way, I don't have no idea. You, you, you asked me about the election. I don't know how many Americans died of COVID. Dying with COVID is not the same as dying of COVID. Hospitals lied for money. It's a corrupt profession. You know how painful that is for me to say? My brother's a professor of medicine and he's a wonderful human being. It's a corrupt profession because the elites are no different than the elites in gender studies. No different. So you're, dis you're disappointed in, in half your fellow Americans. I agree, and I'm disappointed in the elites of every single profession in this country. The American Bar Association, the American Medical Association, college presidents. To be a college president, you have to be a coward. If you're courageous, and not, not talking about a handful of Christian colleges or Hillsdale or what, what have you, these are very big problems. But there's good news. I don't want to leave you depressed. So let me say a final very important thing. Number one, the only place where there's fight back in the world today is in America. This is the most woke country, except for Canada but it's also the country with the only organized conservative rebellion against the left. This is the country. This evening is an example. Don't take talk radio for granted. Talk radio talks to a lot more people than Fox News. This is the giant that people don't talk about. The left hates talk radio. This is a huge thing. That's why you should support every sponsor of this station. I mean, I'd say it at every station event I go to. These, if you're going to have to get these products anyway, get them with the people who support the station. This is in the vanguard of fighting for the country talk radio. Then there, there, there's no PragerU in Switzerland. There's no Daily Wire in Belgium. There's no uh, uh, TPUSA in Sweden. It's all here. It's all here. The whole fight. Half this country is, is not on their side. So please understand that there is hope, but you've got to fight. So let me say a final word. <clears throat> I'm asked all the time if I'm optimistic or pessimistic. 
and I have always had this answer, that I find both essentially useless. <laughs> because the pessimist doesn't fight and the optimist doesn't fight. The optimist doesn't fight, things will turn out fine. Why bother fighting? The pessimist doesn't fight, things are going to turn out crappy. Why bother fighting? So I'm not an optimist and I'm not a pessimist. I only know one thing I have to fight. I took a vow at Normandy Beach, and I mean it's the only vow I ever took. I took a vow at Normandy Beach many, many years, a quarter of a century ago, when I saw all the, the tombstones of 20-year-olds on Normandy Beach mowed down by Nazi machine guns. And I, my vow was, if these kids could, could die for America and liberty, I at least can live for America and liberty. They gave their life, and I will devote my life. Nobody's asking me to give my life. I have a great life. Cigar evenings are not Normandy Beach, just for the record. So this is, this is you have to fight, or at least, and it's just as important, help the fighters. I just finished August, which was fundraising month for PragerU, and I said, I, this, is, this is not a fundraising line, it's the truth. Good people are divided into three groups. Those who fight, those who help the fighters, and those who do nothing. Most do nothing. And they're still nice people. And helping the fighters is, is as good as fighting. If there's no supply tro to, for the troops, the troops get killed. So whether it's talk radio, Prager you or any other fighting conservative organization, you've got to help them. But we really do. We have a lot going on. Believe it or not, leftists don't think they're winning. They are, but they don't think so. They can't believe how many of us there are. It drives them crazy. And how much of us are, exist. So let me tell you, it's not over. There is no war ever fought by good guys where they weren't losing at some point. But they didn't give up. You just have to fight. So we are. And uh, that retains my pride in being an American. Nobody's fighting like America's conservatives are fighting. Thanks, everybody. Dennis Prager, everyone, thank you so much for coming. Thank you all. Wonderful evening. You can hear Dennis tomorrow, 11 yeah, yeah. to 1. Right.